Hello students, Mr. Courtney here, and today we're going to be talking about ions on their compounds. If we think about the subatomic particles, we, we have positively charged particles called protons, neutrons which, are, which do not have a charge, and electrons which are negatively charged. So, what forms an ion? In a neutral atom, we know that the number of protons and electrons are equal. So if we have equal amounts of positive and negative charge, then the overall charge is zero. Now an ion consists of an atom or a group of atoms that have a charge, whether, that, whether it be the charge is positive or the charge is negative. Now they're formed when electrons are either lost or gained. So when atoms or groups of atoms either lose or gain electrons, we form ions. And here, if they lose or gain these electrons, then we've upset the balance of protons and electrons. So we no longer have equal amounts of protons and electrons. If we have a negative charge, that means we have more electrons than protons. If we have a positive charge, we have more protons than electrons. Now we have monatomic ions and polyatomic ions. As the name suggests, monatomic Mon coming from the prefix mono and poly coming from the prefix poly. Mon meaning one. So monatomic ion consists of atoms of a single element or sorry, consists of a single atom. And they're formed either by metals and non-metals. For example, we have the ions formed by chlorine and sodium. The one formed by sodium is positively charged and the one forms by, formed by chlorine is negatively charged. Now, polyatomic ions, poly meaning many, so they contain more than one atom. So it's a molecule made up of two or more atoms that bear the same charge. Now, these atoms could be the same, but the main thing here is that it's two or more atoms joined together and they have a charge. So, for example, we have the SO4 minus 2 and we have HG2 plus 2. So we have two mercury atoms joined together. They make up a polyatomic ion because they have a charge. Positively charged particles are called cations. So ions that are positively charged are called cations. And that means electrons were lost because we have more protons than electrons. Metals tend to form cations. So in this case, if you look at the sodium atom, a neutral sodium atom has equal numbers of protons and electrons, 11 each. But when sodium loses an electron to form its ion, we still have our 11 proton because that did not change. If we change the number of protons, then we also change the identity of the element. And that does not happen in here. We lost an electron, so we reduced it by 1 to 10. If we look at the sum of protons and electrons, we realize we have one more proton than electron so that's how we end up with our positive charge so if a metal loses one electron then its ion will be positively charged which will be positive one a metal that loses two electrons like calcium will have a overall charge of positive two a metal that loses three electrons will have an overall pos charge of positive three this is our positive 2 for calcium because it loses 2 electrons and positive 3 for iron because in this case it loses 3 electrons. When we name monatomic ions, the name of the monatomic cation is the same as the element. All we do is that we add the word ion to the end. So sodium with a charge of plus 1 is called a sodium ion. Calcium with a charge of plus 2 is called a calcium ion. And aluminum with a charge of plus 3 is called an aluminum ion. So here is another casualty in the war of the atoms. Now anions are negatively charged particles that are formed when electrons are gained. Non-metals tend to form anions. And we see here we have the chlorine atom forming the anion called the chloride ion when it gains an gain an electron sorry so it starts off with 17 protons and end with ends with 17 protons so the identity of the atom has not ch changed it's still chlorine but if we look at the number of electrons we gain an electron 
and we started off with 17 so we add in one more electron so that gives us an overall 18 electrons so we have one more negative charge than positive charge so that upsets the balance of protons and electrons so we end up with a substance or a particle that has a negative charge so here we as we said we have more electrons than protons so that results in a negative charge when non-metals gain electron in the case of chlorine here we see it gains one electron so it ends up with one more electron than proton so that gives us overall negative charge oxygen gains two electrons so it ends up with an overall negative two charge because we have two more proton two more electrons sorry than protons nitrogen gains three electrons so it has three more electrons than protons so we have an overall negative three charge Now, when we're naming monatomic anions, the name of the monatomic anion ends in "-ide". The suffix "-ide", is added to the root of the atom name, or the root of the element name. So, for example, oxide. We get oxide from oxygen. We take off the Y-G-E-N, and we add I-D-E, and that gives us oxide ion. Chloride comes from chlorine. Take off the I-N-E and the I-D-E. That gives us a chloride ion. Sulfur. We take off the U-R. Then we add the I-D-E. That gives us a sulfide ion. So here's an easy way to think about cations and anions. You think positively about cats and negatively about ants. Let's look at the charge of an element based on its position on the periodic table. Now you can determine the charge of the element based on its position on the periodic table. Now all the elements in group 1, they're going to lose one electron to form a positive one ion. So all the elements in group 1, including hydrogen, tend to form positively ions with a positive one charge. Elements in group 2 tend to form ions with a positive two charge. They're gonna lose two electrons. These elements in group three tend to lose three electrons to form ions with a positive three charge. These elements in group here, they gain three electrons because they have a negative three charge. These elements here gain two electrons, so they have a negative two charge. These elements will gain one electron to have a negative one charge. These elements do not gain or lose electrons, so the overall charge still remains zero. Then we have some elements here, like silver, cadmium, zinc. Silver will gain, will lose one electron, cadmium will lose two electrons. Now the elements here, we call these elements, remember the elements between here, they're called the transition metals. The transition metals will form cations with various charges. Now why is it they form cations? Because they're metals. Metals will lose electrons. And when they lose electrons, they end up with a positively charged ion. And we call these positively charged ions cations. Now, ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are compounds formed between a metal and a non-metal. So the ions of these metals and non-metals combine to form a compound. The total charge of the cations plus the total charge of the anions is equal to zero in the compound. So that means your overall inner compound, in an ionic compound, the overall positive charge is equal to the overall negative charge. So they are the same. The overall charges are the same, resulting in a neutral compound. So the net charge of the compound is zero, as we said before. Let's look at some examples of how you determine the formula of the compound. So we have a compound formed between the sodium ion and the sulfide ion. So if you look at what the so sodium ion is, sodium ion is plus one, the sulfide ion is negative two. So when we look at the charges, we realize that we have a plus one charge and a negative two charge. They're not balanced. So if we add another sodium ion, then we end up with an overall charge of plus two and negative two, 
when we add these together we have an overall charge of zero so now we have a neutral compound so the formula for this compound requires two sodium atoms and one sulfide atom so that shows us if we go back to when we talked about the formula of compounds before since we have two sodium atoms we represent the two atoms by a subscript after sodium and the subscript is two so that's Na2S. So we have a compound formed between calcium ion and the phosphide ion. Calcium is plus two, phosphide is negative three. Now if we add, we know that it's already unbalanced, but if we add one more calcium ion, that gives us an overall charge of four, positive four, and a charge of negative three. So we still have an over an unbalanced compound. This cannot work because the net charge in a compound needs to be zero. So what we do is that we need to have three calcium ions that gives us an overall charge of positive, positive six. And we need two phosphide ions, which gives us an overall charge of negative six. So now that we have overall charge of positive six and negative six, which balances out to give us a neutral compound or a net charge of zero because positive six plus negative six is equal to zero. That is the formula for our compound formed between calcium ion and the phosphide ion. We have three calcium atoms, so that's Ca3, and two phosphide atoms, which is P2. Okay, so this takes us to the end of this lesson. We talked about ions, monatomic, polyatomic ions, how ions are formed, what are cations, what are anions, then we look at the compounds formed between ionic ions, and we call these compounds ionic compounds. The overall charge on an ionic compound is zero because we have equal amounts of positive and negative charges. So this takes us to the end of this lesson. Until the next time, I'm out. Blessings.